We do welcome everybody back that has been viewing us somewhat. Uh, we hope that uh, they'll continue to do so as we strive to uh, to make the the Lord's word available to them and uh, with the way that the weather and, and those type of things and, and all that anyway ended up or didn't end up however the case was uh, on Sunday uh, we weren't we didn't have evening service so uh, we, didn't, we weren't in our study so it brings us back uh, for those of you, we are in uh, Hosea chapter 6, and we're up to uh, verse number 5. Uh, it says, Therefore have I hewed them by the prophets. I have slain them by the words of my mouth. And thy judgments are as the light that goeth forth. Now, that I that we see there is God. So this is God speaking here. And, you know, His, uh, God's people, they uh, despised and didn't pay any attention to the gentler or the, uh, the kinder warnings and the measures of the Lord. And because they were fickle in their faith, and the Lord used more severe tactics to get their attention. You know, at times the Lord will subtly attempt to change the heart of a person or a people. And I mean, it's just He just doesn't jump out there and, and get on somebody, you know. He gives them every opportunity. It's kind of like what we saw uh, in Daniel chapter 3 over uh, last Sunday morning. We saw that uh, old Nebuchadnezzar even. Uh, you know, he gave the, the three Hebrews, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, another opportunity there in verse, I believe it's 15, to uh, bow down. He, he, he just, you know, uh, He gave them another chance. Well, I thank the Lord that we have a God of the second, the third, and the fourth, and the fifth chances. But there comes a point now that we have to realize something. That even God is going to get fed up. Even God is, gonna, is going to... Uh, I mean, all of a sudden it, it will be, look, I gave you a chance after chance after chance after chance. I'm done. And then he goes a different route. And we find here in verse number 5 that that's what's going to happen. He's fixing to use more severe tactics to get their attention. Uh, it says he hewed them. H-E-W-E-D. Uh, as men hew stones out of a quarry with hard blows and sharp instruments, we find that we get the idea that God is going to hew them. And He's going to do it with the Word of God coming from the very mouths of His prophets. So, uh, God is going to be using the prophets and yet He's going to be Creating and a more drastic approach to them. Uh, in Jeremiah chapter 23, in verse 29, it says, Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? You know, we need to never underestimate the power of God's word. God's Word is powerful. And it has more strength than we can begin to comprehend. It always has an effect upon someone. And it's never, never sent out 
in vain. It always has a purpose, has a reason, and God will use it for His honor and His glory. And even He'll even use it to get our attention. It's what He says here that He's going to do uh, to the, uh, the people here. It, it, it's not if we're going to uh, have judgment. And it's not perhaps, it's the certainty and the inevitability of judgment. It's coming. And we can, we can just count on that. Even in today's realm of things, judgment is coming. I mean, nothing is going to be uh, is going to be done or uh, go or even left unjudged. Everything is going to be judged. The people of Israel here are about to be judged, and uh, you know, in Isaiah. Chapter 55 and verse 11, it says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Now, these folks here, they got to realize something. That... God is speaking to them and He's speaking to them about judgment and He's using His prophets to do it with. Nevertheless, it is still God's Word and it is still God doing the talking. Whether He's talking to His prophets or what. Uh, The piety and the goodness of God's people were light and unsubstantial, just like a summer cloud. Their stony hearts were harder than granite. The stone takes the shape which the sculptor gives it. But God, here in in verse number 5, hews them in vain, for they will not receive the image of God in their lives. They are resistant to His will because they have a fickle faith. They're fickle. They don't know what they want. But they know that they don't want this and they don't want that. But they can't tell you what they want. They're fickle. It's just like... uh, uh, trying to, to decide something. You ever ask a question of someone? You're going out, you, you made your mind up, you're going out to eat. Right? You ever made that, have, have you ever been the one driving and make that idiotic question? Well, what would you like? And all of a sudden you get a great response. That make me no difference. I don't care. Whatever. And then you start naming things, right? Well, let's have this. No, I don't want that. Well, well, let's go here. Well, no, I don't really want to go there. And then it's like, well, we could do and it, no, just go someplace. Okay, fine. You go somewhere, and then it's like. Well, I really didn't want this. Well, give me a break. Tell me what you want. You know, God is kind of the same way here. You know, we find that same circumstance in the people of Israel and the people of Judah here. They are fickle. They don't know what they want, but they know that it ain't God. Because if it was God, they'd already return to Him for everything that He's doing and bringing them and warning them and telling them. But when they began to search it out, they can't tell you what they want. 
They can't tell you where they want it from. All that you can do is just leave it to them that they're fickle. Period. Their faith isn't what it ought to be. You know, we look the Word of God coming forth from the mouths of His prophets beat upon and vex them even unto death. And yet, they were still fickle in their faith. It did not allow them to rest in their sins or enjoy themselves in their disobedience. And since they would not repent and get right with God, what should have been for their prosperity was now for their destruction. God, God has no intent in His being to destroy us. He wants us to prosper. You know, He wants us to, to, to get be and to have the best, but He also wants us to be faithful and not fickle in our faith. Now these folks here, they were fickle in their faith. It didn't matter what the prophet said. God, God could have stepped down and stood right before them and it wouldn't have made any difference. They'd still been the same way they are. Because that's the way they are. Their hearts are hardened towards God. We see the same thing when we look at the uh, uh, in the book of Exodus. We find the the uh, the story of Moses and the Exodus or the, the exit of the of uh, uh, God's people out of Egypt uh, going over into the promised land full of milk and honey, right? And yet, uh, when we find it, we, we find that old Pharaoh, you know, his old heart was just hard. And God had to do uh, things in order for him to let the people go. And he brought the plagues unto Egypt. And the people cried. And they cried out unto Pharaoh about it. But his old heart was just hard as a rock. Same with these people here. The people of Israel that we find here in Hosea's day, their hearts were hard. To them, you know, they, they didn't have any, any use for God. If they did, they'd have been serving Him. But they weren't. They were doing anything and everything but. Now they would come back they would, they would, they would cry out every once in a while, I guess, for or they they wouldn't be considered to be fickle. They would cry out when when they quite didn't understand things. We've seen that in this study so far. They that they would cry back out to God and and hoping that God would come back. We earlier uh, there in chapter five, we we find that you know as they began. And uh, even here in chapter 6 and verse 1, you know, they talk about returning to God and, and all these things. But their heart wasn't in it. Because if it was, we wouldn't find ourselves here in, ver in verse number 5, where God was uh, hewing them like a piece of stone. Since they wouldn't repent. Uh, and get right. God used what He could have used for their prosperity. He now used for their destruction. He says, I slew them by the words of my mouth. His word, He slew them. God spoke yet more seriously and firmly to them. He slew them in word that He might not slay them indeed. You know, there are times we can even, uh, we look at and uh, uh, we contemplate back upon our children uh, and we look now into our grandchildren and things. There are times, you know, when we sit and we say, oh, no, no, no. And then it's, oh, no, no, no. And then eventually, the the old no, no, no 
comes around and gets a little harsher because they ain't listening. And they're not acting. They're not doing what they ought to be doing. And all we're trying to do is teach them something. And eventually, you know, we got to be like God here. Like he, He's slaying them with His Word. But it's better to slay them by His Word than by His deed. And the same with, with us and our, our grandkids. You know, sometimes we got to get a little harsher on them so that they'll listen to us. Now, it may not last but the moment, but at least for that moment, they're going to listen to us one way or another. <laughs> you know, sometimes we got to spank their hands, sometimes we got to spank the bottom. But at times, it's for their own good because we're trying to teach them something. God's trying to teach people of Israel something. But they're not hearkening to His voice. They're not hearkening to His Word. They're not hearkening to what the prophet is telling them. He's not listening to what Hosea is telling them. So God says, okay. Fine. You don't want to listen to my word? Then we'll go another route. I mean, you know, he threatened, God threatened them with death, and since they repented not, death came. The stone which will not take the form which should have been given to it, it is destroyed by the strokes which should have been molding it instead. By a like image, Jeremiah compared God's rebellious people to one which is consumed in the fire, which should refine it because there was no good in it. Jeremiah 6 and verse 28 through 30 it says, They are all grievous revolters, walking with slanders. They are brass and iron. They are all corruptors. The bellows are burned. The lead is consumed by the fire. The founder melteth in vain. For the wicked are not plucked away. Reprobate silver shall men call them because the Lord hath rejected them. Now think about it. Man, at this point in time, God is rejecting His people. And it's not God's fault. It's their fault. Because they won't listen. He tried and he tried and he's tried and he's tried. But they won't listen. Their heart is hard. It's just like, you know, they, they sit up here, they, they hear his word, go in one ear and it just keeps going. They don't pay any attention to it. Because their heart's already set on some on another way. But believe me, God has a way of getting our attention. God's people were stubborn, rebellious. They were deceitful, corrupt. And they were hard as iron or brass. God's refining fire was in vain because there was no good or purity to be found within them. That's the whole idea behind a, a fire like this. You put the, the, you put the raw metal and things in it. The fire, once it's hot enough, and a smelter's fire will, will burn off the impurities. And what is left is the pure. 
Well, in this case, what we find is that God has been trying to refine them and refine them and refine them. But instead of burning the impurities out and leaving the good, there's no good to be found. It's all impurities. You know, we kind of look at the world today. And man, at times, you look at some of the things that, that's happening in our world today, and some of those things, you can't hardly, you can't see anything good coming out of some of that. It's because it, it's all impure. And it's all being burned away. You know, the people here in God in, in Hosea's day, they were in pretty bad shape. When we are fickle in our faith, our relationship and our walk with the Lord are severely affected. We find ourselves the world finds itself having the same attitudes that God's people had in Hosea's day. I look at some of the things going on and it's hard to believe. But it's happening. I heard in the midst of all that stuff today trying to quote uh, the Apostle Paul. And I'm like, you know, and from the ones that were trying to do it, you're sitting there thinking, well, man, you want to talk about blasphemy? <laughs> you probably ain't been in church since you passed one on the street. It was... But we look today, same thing's going on. People are stubborn, they're rebellious, they're hard-hearted towards the Lord. They don't think, they don't look, they don't realize that the many blessings that are in our life are not because of us, and they ain't because of the world, and they're not because of our jobs, or whatever the case is. They are blessings, and they are bestowed upon us because of God. Period. But their hearts are hard. But you know, we, we should not be surprised about it. The Bible tells us those things. In Thessalonians, it tells us that, you know, the world, the things of the world are going to wax worse and worse and worse before they're going to get better. And it's coming. God's judgment is on the way. I mean, I, I literally believe we are, we are in those last days. Now, how, how long are the last days? I have no idea. But literally, I believe that we're in them. Because from what we can see in Matthew 24 or 25, whichever one it is, uh, right off hand, uh, we see where we are. The things that are going on in, in our world and, and all that, man, it's all listed right there. It tells us that it's coming. And all the way up until I believe it's verse 14, and then we find the, the times of the tribulation. We should not be surprised about all this stuff. We look and, and the average person on the street today says, Golly, I can't believe all this stuff. Why not? God's Word says it's come. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. 
For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. What America is sowing today is going to reap. What the world is sowing today is going to reap. What the church is sowing today it is going to reap. We find the concern for intimacy. In verse 6, God says, For I, for God desired mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. Now, we have to look, this, this word mercy is interpreted faithfulness. I, for God desires mercy faithfulness and not sacrifice and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings the heart of God is for us to know and to love him that's what he desires that's what he wants he wants us more than our religious deeds, more than our sacrifices, more than uh, anything. He wants us. He wants us to fellowship with Him, to know Him, to love Him with all of our heart, body, soul, and spirit. He is concerned that we be intimate with Him. God made this very clear in the New Testament. In Mark chapter 12, and verse 30, it says, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. Matthew 9, verse 13. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I am not come to call the righteous, but the sinners to repentance. Man, the, the well person doesn't need no doctor. The sick person needs a doctor. And we have a great physician. giving offerings and sacrifices to the Lord without giving one's self to the Lord is offensive to Him. He would just as soon you keep the stuff. Because if, he, if you don't know Him and He doesn't know you and you don't have Him and He doesn't have you, He could care less about our money and whatever other sacrifices and stuff that we send His way. Because to Him, that's all just lip service. He wants our obedience and our fellowship. 1 Samuel 15, in verse 22, it says, And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices? as in obeying the voice of God? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. Micah, chapter 6, verse 6-8, says, Wherewith shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before the high God? Shall I come before Him with burnt offerings? With calves of a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams or, or with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression and the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has shewed thee, O man, what is good. And what doth the Lord require thee? 
but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. That's the reason we find Jesus teaching that lesson to His disciples in the temple that day. When the rich man came in and threw all he could, you know, in the, in the, the offering deals, which are built like, they, 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 they look like a big opening and it kind of comes down and it goes into a box so when you throw a lot of change and stuff in there it sounds like man there's a lot of stuff going in there makes all this noise and boy the old rich man would come in and throw that stuff in there and look around like and watch everybody look at it Jesus said that's nothing and here come the little widow where there are two little mites. I've got a, a, a couple of mites that I brought back from Israel. And they're only, they're, they're, they're about half the size of a dime. And she had two of them. And she put them in the offering there. Jesus told His disciples that that is more than anything that's been presented to Him. He counted it more because the rich man gave of his, of his change, right? Or, or what perhaps was uh, just something he had in his pocket. The little widow woman gave all she had. And she gave it to the Lord. When we lose our intimacy with God, we begin to grow cold spiritually and are troubled with doubt. When when we when we don't give God when our relationship with him grows cold, so does our heart. And it grows cold and hard. And our faith becomes fickle. We don't need nothing. I don't need nothing from God. God can't supply me with anything. He can't keep me anywhere. He can't. He can't make keep uh, anything I got worth anything. God's nothing. That's that's what happens when your faith becomes fickle. Because then we quit relying on God and we start relying on everything else but God. And God says, you know. Man, all your religious junk, that's all it is, is religious junk. All the sacrifices. Man, you can, you can sacrifice every lamb on the face of the earth. But if your heart ain't right in doing it, all you're doing is killing a bunch of sheep as far as the Lord's concerned. People of Israel here in Hosea's day, man, they, they weren't doing anything towards the Lord because their heart was cold. Their faith was fickle. It, they were faithless. Not faithful. And it made God sick to His stomach. Sin. We'll stop right there. Uh, we need to, to just remember, uh, of course, all those on our prayer list and things. Uh, I hope and, and pray that those folks out there that 
watch us on YouTube and things. You know, I've been looking. And I mean, for the most part, you'll see like one view or something. I hope that in that one view that there's a whole bunch of people there because you know, I believe God wants us to have that relationship. And you can't have a relationship if you're not willing to get into it. So whether here or there, you know, I, I pray that we'll have the right kind of relationship that the Lord would have us to have. So let's pray and we can be dismissed this evening. Dear Lord, we do come thanking you once again for your very day, Lord, the beautiful uh, day that you bless us with. And Lord, we, we ask now that as, as you continue us in and through the remainder of this week, Lord, that you would prepare our hearts to, to meet with you again on this Sunday. Lord, as we come and, and we uh, assemble ourselves together, Lord. Lord, I pray that you be with our prayer list and those that are mentioned there, Lord, that you would have your will and way in each and every circumstance as you see fit to do. And Lord, we'll give you praise, honor, and glory for it. Lord, just uh, continue to, to be with our world, be with our country, Lord, uh, and the people. Lord, as uh, so much trouble, turmoil, Lord, is going on. And Lord, I pray that you would just help us. And Lord, the only way that you can help us, Lord, is to have your will and your way in it. Lord, just continue to watch out over us, Lord, the remainder of this week. Lord, that you take us home uh, safely as we depart this place this evening. Lord, be with those that are watching on uh, YouTube, Lord. And Lord, we pray that uh, that eventually, Lord, that They'll, they'll come and assemble themselves together with us. And back in your house, Lord, and uh, fellowship with us, Lord. Let us be able to just love on them. Lord, we just uh, we thank you for your many blessings. And Lord, we, we continue to just uh, look forward to the day. Lord, in which we'll be able to, to just see you face to face, Lord. And how much of, a, of a, uh, a blessing that truly will be. Lord, we love you. We thank you for it. It's in the name of Jesus that we do pray. Amen.